Good morning. Today, I will be giving you the announcements of the week. For a convenient way to stay in touch with Antioch, download our app. Make sure you pick up the latest copy of the ABC newspaper. Please don't forget, we have prayer every day at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. We have our virtual Bible study every Wednesday after 7 p.m. prayer. And if you have an urgent request, need prayer, or want to know more about our ministry, call us today at 973-379-1465. Follow us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Vacation Bible School will be beginning soon. Youth classes will take place July 12th to the 16th at 10 a.m. to noon. And the adult classes will take place July 19th to the 23rd at 7.30 p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. Good morning, family. Good morning, friends. Good morning, Antioch Baptist Church. On behalf of Pastor Hobbs, the Antioch Baptist Church officers, its ministries and congregation, we'd like to welcome you to this morning's service. We hope you enjoy it. We'd like to start off by wishing you guys a happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day. More importantly, though, we'd like to wish you guys happy communion. This is the first Sunday of the month. So let's all rejoice and be glad in the fact that we can commune with the Lord. If you're a first time visitor or returning guest, please in the comment section below, give us your name and number and a wave so we can get in contact with you. If you are someone that's interested in what goes on here at Antioch, please log on to Antioch640.org or call us at 973-379-1465. Check us out on Facebook, which you are doing now, or Instagram or YouTube. It's a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Let's all rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so glad to be with you and welcome you to Antioch Baptist Church. Hope you enjoy the service. God bless you. Father, we are here. We are here to worship this morning. Come on, praise team. Let's worship the Lord Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Good morning, good morning. Here we are to worship. We are here, Lord, to worship you, to bow down and to give you praise and honor and glory. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, good morning. Happy 4th to everyone. They call this Independence Day and they do so because there were a bunch of rebels and that had uh, this inkling that they wanted to be free, so they had a rebellion. You know, rebels have rebellion, and the rebellion uh, was on this faith on such a fateful day as the fourth of July. They came and declared independence from England. Well, this morning I'm not going to necessarily uh, talk about that, but I want to declare this not so much Independence Day, but how about Dependence Day? Well, what do we mean by that? Yes, I am dependent. I'm dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ for my health and strength. I'm dependent on God for my life and liberty. The Bible says he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. People have looked to be independent all throughout history. Even in the days of Jesus, they were still looking to be free from someone. There's always been tyranny. There's always been people trying to control others. But the Lord Jesus said, listen, if you come to me, uh, he that's heavy laden <laughs> and have burdens, or come to me and I will give you true rest. And I'm here today to say I'm dependent on Jesus. I'm not depending on anybody else. So today on this July 4th, I'm declaring this Dependence Day. We're dependent. We're captives. Oh, God, we are slaves of none other than Jesus Christ, our Lord, and what his spirit leads and guides us to all truth and righteousness. Aren't you grateful to the Lord this morning? And I, I, I know, you know, we, we, we have our holidays, and I'm hoping everybody enjoys it, enjoys it safely safely and don't eat don't don't eat too much don't go don't go go crazy with it but you know what this morning we're going to celebrate jesus in communion as well we're going to uh, celebrate him as we uh, uh break uh, the bread and, and 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 as we take the elements in what ingest them and digest them to the glory of our savior we want to talk about that this morning a little bit in in respect to loving our brothers and our sisters even as we do this together on one accord. So this morning, we're just going to turn this over now to our deacon, Walker, to give us the opening prayer. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let's talk to our Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you uh, again just for this day, Lord. Um, thank you for so much, Lord. Uh, the intentions of this country, Lord, we're to be one nation under you, God, Lord, with liberty and justice for all. But we know and we realize and we understand that that only comes in your kingdom, Lord. And we thank you for Jesus who makes it possible for anyone, Lord, anyone that would submit to him, Lord, anyone that would believe in him to come to him. And we thank you and we ask today that you would move on somebody today that has never fully experienced you, Lord. And in and, and, and that same vein, Lord, we ask, Lord, today that you would come inhabit this place, Lord, wherever we are, Lord, that we would fully experience you, Lord, and, and get a touch from you like never before. We thank you for your spirit that dwells in us, Lord, and we just ask that you would fill each and every one of us with your spirit so that we can execute your work of your kingdom, Lord, and your plans that you have, Lord, so that we could be the shining light in this dark world, Lord, so that we can make a change and a difference in somebody's life today, Lord, that we might bring somebody joy today, Lord, that we might love somebody today in a way that they realize who you are, Lord, and that, that you truly love them, Lord, through us. We thank you for that opportunity to be used by you today, Lord. And we just ask that you will remember those needs, Lord, those that have lost loved ones throughout this week, Lord, those that are struggling and sick this morning, Lord, mentally, physically, whatever it may be, Lord, we ask that you would comfort them right now, even now, Lord, and that you will reverberate throughout this world, Lord, for we know that you are an omnipresent God, Lord, and we thank you that we can depend on you, Lord. Thank you that you are reliable and not like us, Lord. Thank you so much, and we just ask Lord, that you would have your way today, Lord, and we look forward to your son Jesus' return. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't it beautiful to see the choir, even though they're masked, even though they uh, weren't able to be in the choir stand as they normally were? Isn't that great just to, to see the people of God giving the praise, honor, and the glory and sounding good? Oh, so we're so grateful to God for what he's done for us. And so that's why we praise him the way we do. This is why we give him the glory and the honor because he's worthy. He's been so good to us that all our complaints really uh, are, 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 are not sense, really, when you think about it. All the things we're saying that, that are going wrong. Oh, what about all the stuff that's going right? If we look at it in balance, you know, the, the, there was a song that said, what, uh, I have my good days and bad days. But if I look at it in balance... I won't complain. So we come this morning not complaining, but giving God the glory and the honor. Oh, boy, I'm excited this morning. Let me just get right to it. If you have your Bibles, we're looking at this one verse in 1 Corinthians 11 and 33. Just this one small verse in a really, really large uh, concept and theological discourse by the Apostle Paul. Paul. But I just want to read this verse and because it's very important for us today to get this as we prepare our hearts and minds for communion and for communing, not just for the communion service, but what about communing with one another and, of course, with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the verse is this. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. Can I read that again? Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. Let me just give you a little backdrop about what's going on here. The Apostle Paul declares that after the resurrection of Christ, that he met with him privately and Christ spoke to him of different things. He spoke to him specifically concerning communion and the manner with which we should conduct communion. And so the Apostle Paul in this scripture was admonishing and beating up the people of Corinth, for the Corinthians had corrupted communion. Now, let me just explain, though. They corrupted communion with their cultural biases, with their regular culture. They didn't create something specifically to mess up communion. Don't get it wrong. They didn't come up with new uh, uh, concepts of how to disrupt communion, but their regular uh, day, daily routine, their regular mentality was already not in concert with what Christ had brought and had freed them from. We're talking about freedom this morning, aren't we? So Christ frees you from some stuff, even some stuff that you've al always done, some stuff that you actually love doing, that he comes to free us from that as well. And so in that culture, it was very, very much apropos for rich people, right, to not share with poor people. And what happens is in a, in a, in a civil and in, in a social setting, they would never be together. And so rich people would come. And as their, their habit was, rich people would put the best food first and put all the wonderful best wine first and put all those things. And they would come and they would eat. And poor people then would have to eat what's left if anything was left, you see. And they would scavenge for uh, whatever they could get. And that was the culture of that time. They always did that. This is just what they did. But what happened is that the people that came to Christ and when they came and they were saved and they, and they found out about this gospel, they gave their hearts to Christ, but they didn't always give what their habits to Christ. Are you hearing me this morning? Some of us are guilty of the same thing. We gave our hearts to the Lord and we gave uh, what we could to the Lord. We gave our resources to him. But you know what? Sometimes we don't give up those things that are not Christ-like in our lives. And that's what happened here. And so Paul beat them up really good. And if you got to read that whole 11th chapter of, 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 of 1 Corinthians, because he was beating up and saying, you guys are wrong in what you're doing. There is no, no, I'm not going to praise you in the things you're doing. What you're doing, you're eating up all the food before the other folk come. And, and one scripture said they came, they ate all the food. And when the, when the other folk came, they were already full and they were drunk. And he said, that is terrible. 
And, and, and of course, we focus on the drunk part, right? We say, oh, Paul was, didn't want them to be drunk. But that wasn't the, the most egregious thing they had done. The most egregious, egregious action was the fact that they left their brothers and sisters out of the party. And they had a party without them, and they did not include them in the celebration. And Christ said, you know what? Because of that, the spirit of Christ is so angry with that. Because of that, some of you are weak and some of you are sickly, and some have even died. He said, the, the God is not going to glorify you in that because you left people out. So for a few moments, I just want to talk for, on the subject at, as, at, at, of lift as you climb. Lift as you climb. And when I got that, I, heard, I saw that, of course. I stole that from Facebook. So I saw it, and I loved it so much, and I had to use it this morning. Lift as you climb, because when I saw that title, it gave me images of, of mountain climbers. And I've seen, I've never climbed a mountain, but I've seen movies and I've seen television where they would climb. And the climbers would be what? Tied to one another. And the stronger climber goes and climbs ahead of the weaker climber. And when the strong and the weaker climber can't go, that strong climber pulls them up and says, listen, I'm not going any higher until you come with me. I'm not, I'm, I refuse to go to the next level until you're there with me because what well, you're my partner. You're, 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 uh, we're, we're connected together. We're tethered together. We're not going to, I'm not going to allow you not to make it. And when they get to the peak, to the highest peak, they both rejoice, even though uh, the weaker one would have never gotten there had they not had somebody stronger pulling them up. But they both can rejoice because what they did it together. And the Lord is calling us today to lift as we climb. We've got to lift our brothers and sisters. There may be some that are not as strong as you, that may not understand what you understand, that may not have the sensibility that you have. But you know what? They're your brother and they're your sister. And if we're going to truly celebrate our liberty in Christ Jesus, if we're going to celebrate this communion of morning, if we're going to take his body and take his blood and, and, and declare that we are his children, then guess what? His children do his will. His children do his bidding. And his bidding today is that we love. Uh, the Gospel of John declares that by this shall all men know you my disciples. What? How, the way we have church? Our stained glass windows? How much we shout? No. Uh, um, how big our churches are? How many people come? No. None of those things. Jesus said, by this shall all men know you, my disciples, by the love you have one to another. Oh, my God. Well, aren't you so grateful that we have love not only for one to another, but one for each other? We've got to demonstrate that love. As uh, we were getting ready and, and this whole thought came to me because as we were getting ready this week, talking about um, coming back. And yes, yes, we're talking about it. We're planning. We're not doing more than talking. We're planning. We're getting ready. Uh, well, you got to pardon our appearance right now because the place looks a mess. But that's what happens when you're getting ready, right? We're getting different things. And we're talking to different people. And I'm finding that we have so many different opinions on, on just about everything. Some people want to wear masks. Some don't. Some people want to get vaccinated. Some don't. Some people don't mind sitting in close quarters. Others don't. We have every conceivable opinion, um, temperature taking, cleanliness, right? Um, sanitation. There are so many issues. And I got to a point this week, I'm hearing all this stuff. I'm like, I'm sick of this. <laughs> How about we just wait till COVID totally blows over. Let's wait a year, another year, two years until we could just walk in with no mask, no registration, no nothing. We don't have to have these issues. And I was just like at my wit's end, like I'm just, I can't take this anymore. But I am so glad that we have some wonderful anointed brothers and sisters. You know what? In this life, you need to have some people you can call when you're at your wit's end. You need to have some people that you can confide in. And I call my brothers and sisters who are um, pastors and, and they have already are in their church and they've gone through this. I called around and just did get different advice and hearing people and they begin to encourage my heart. But no one encouraged my heart more than my own sister. I believe you're listening now. She doesn't even know this. But we had a really brief discussion. And in her own way, she made me feel so crazy for even having doubt. I, she made me feel like, what are you talking about? What you're talking about as problems, God is looking at as opportunity. 
I said, what are you talking about? I'm just, are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to the stress in my voice? And you're talking about this is an opportunity. But then the Lord began to just disclose to me exactly what she was saying. And I thank God for her and I thank God for all God's people. It's good to have anointed people in your camp, isn't it? And some people you just can talk to when you're down. And she began to talk. And at, at, by the end of that conversation, I was like, let's go and do this thing. We got to come back. Show off and show out for Jesus. Because here is the thing. The entire world has been perplexed by this uh, 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 virus. There, there's, there's, this pandemic is not just here in, in New Jersey. It's not just here in Antioch. It is, it is all over the world. The whole world has been impacted. People are arguing everywhere you look. People at jobs don't want to sit next to each other. They don't know how to act. Um, businesses are closing down. People are quitting. And rather than go back to work, teachers are afraid of children. And everybody is perplexed. Everyone doesn't know what to do. So we're not alone in this. And and the world is saying, what are we going to do? But guess what? And then there's us. (laughs) There's the people of God. And God's saying, this is your time. We were always complaining, Lord, I want to reach the world. I want to show them. Remember, they said the churches were not essential. That we, we don't need the churches or we don't need church folk. But guess what? Now is our time to shine. Because guess what? While everybody else is arguing. Why everybody else doesn't know how to get along. He has given us the spirit of cooperation, the spirit of unity. If we just use that love he put in our heart, if, it's, if it becomes more than just a sermon, it beco- if it becomes more than just something we say, but something we do, if we uh, well, refer, defer to our brothers and sisters all the time, if I have more concern about you than myself, that becomes a demonstration of the love of Jesus Christ in my heart. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so listen, I might come to church and you come to church and I don't want to wear a mask, but you're afraid to be here without people wearing masks. If it means I got to put on two masks, I'm okay with that because I'm not here for myself. I'm here to love you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So other people say, well, I don't want to be in close proximity. Guess what? I'll move across the whole room. I'll move outside if that means that you're going to oh God, be able to worship better, if you're going to be able to praise God. We all have our opinions. We all have the things we want to do. But if we can understand that, forget about what you normally do. Forget about how uh, we we have the singers. Uh, It's very difficult to sing with those masks on. But you heard them this morning. And guess what? What I didn't see, I felt. What I what I didn't I, I didn't observe with my eyes. There was a praise in the air. I don't need to see praise. I need to feel it in my soul. And I'm so glad to know that God can still use you with a mask on. He can still use you, oh God, distance from your neighbors. He can still use us. And as we come together, we must learn to defer to one another. And there are those who got all kinds of issues. Guess what? Lift them up. As you go, you might be, oh, I'm okay with this thing. I'm not worried about it. But the person that is worried about it, they're your brothers and sisters. You can't climb by yourself. You need to lift them up. Let's, let, let's lift as we climb. Let's pick up our brothers and sisters, those who may be up frightened, those who may be fearful, those who may have even uh, contracted the virus. And, and, and of course, they have reason to be afraid. <laughs> They've been through it where you haven't been. So guess what? And you know what? And there are places I'm weak. So can you pick me up? Because when I get weak, I need somebody who's willing, somebody who loves me enough and loves the Lord enough to demonstrate the love that we have for one another. Listen, we're going to go into communion right now. And I could go on and on about this thing because I feel it in my spirit. We've got to do what we've got to do what to let the world know. Watch this. And, you know, I'm always saying, Lord, let this little light shine. But here's the, the, here's the thing about a little light. You can have a little teeny weeny light. And typically, if I had a little flashlight right now, you could barely see it. But the darker things get around me, hallelujah, the darker the, the night gets, the brighter that light seems. The light didn't get any brighter, but it appears brighter. Guess what? Oh, we, we, we had a little church before, before COVID. But when we come back and we demonstrate love, that little bit of light that we have is going to loom large in the world. When they say, how can these people have the answer? Hallelujah. How do they get along? What is it about them that allows them, oh God, to love even in the midst of chaos? And we have a testimony 
that is Jesus Christ, our Lord, he and only he gets us through these things. Aren't y'all, now aren't y'all excited to come back? I don't care what the conditions are. If you got to stand on one foot and put, <laughs> and put your hand on your head, it doesn't matter. I'll do that if it makes you happy, if it makes you, if it makes you able to get to our Lord and Savior. Because at the end of the day, we're going to lift him up. We're going to praise him and give him the glory. God bless you this morning. Would you please prepare your hearts and minds for communion? We're going to go into our communion. Get your elements. We'll have a break. We'll come back and have that together. God bless you. For those of you that are on the uh, phone, I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 30, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Now, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying to him, What do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say unto you, one of you will betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and each of them began to say to him, Lord, is it I? He answered and said, He who dipped his hand with me in the dish will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Rabbi, is it I? You have said it. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. When he took the cup and gave thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And let us prepare to prepare our hearts to take on our communion for this day. And Jesus took the bread, blessed, and break it and said, take, eat. This is my body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for his blood. And after supping, he took the cup and said, drink ye all of it. And this is the blood of Jesus Christ. And they drank. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your salvation's plan that you included each and every one of us. Would you bow your heads with us as we close? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come as humbly as we know how, just continuously giving you praise and honor and glory as much as we can do. And even that falls way short of what we owe you. <laughs> but we can't pay what we owe you because, oh God, it's incalculable what you have done for us. But Lord, we do what we can with what we have and this day, we surrender all. We thank you for your freedom. We thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for being dependent on you. This is our dependence day. We depend on you to continue to be with us. We ask that you bless everyone under the sound of our voice this morning. Bless them, oh God, abundantly. Give them the desires of their heart as they, oh God, rest in you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for the service. These things we pray in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let all those people say amen and amen. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Love you all.